What is narcissistic rage? There are all kinds of psychological terminology to explain dynamics like narcissism and narcissistic rage, but the truth is none of these dynamics are new. Psychology has been very helpful in developing terms and language to crystallize this kind of toxic behavior, but the truth is the Bible, which is an ancient book dating thousands of years back, is full of examples of these narcissistic dynamics with people. Solomon, the wisest man in the world, wrote, there's nothing new under the sun. What has been will be again, and what has been done will be done again. Narcissism, narcissistic abuse, and narcissistic rage are all things that were done before, and they will continue to be done again. So in this video, I'm gonna explore some examples of narcissists that flew into narcissistic rage in the Bible and the kinds of triggers that can set these people off so that hopefully you will get insight and know that their rage is not about you, but deeper issues within them. Now, first, if you are new, welcome to my channel. Toxicity is not your destiny, where I delve into navigating toxic relationships from a biblical, practical, and spiritual perspective. So if you'd like to receive regular content from me, hit that subscribe button and click the bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. So before I get into examples in the Bible, let's clarify what narcissistic rage is. Narcissistic rage is not the same as general rage. It's possible to get enraged and not be a narcissist. There are all kinds of reasons why a person would get angry or get enraged that have nothing to do with being a narcissist. So let's just get that out of the way. So what makes rage narcissistic rage? Imagine you're dealing with someone who's super full of themselves, always needing attention and admiration, able to dish out all kinds of criticisms and insults like no one's business. But when it comes to them, their egos are so fragile, they cannot even handle the slightest criticism against them. That is a classic narcissist. They can dish it out, but they cannot take it in for themselves. So when something threatens their self image or sense of superiority, they don't just get a little upset or let it roll off them like water off a duck's back. They explode with what's called narcissistic rage. It's like a switch just goes off in them where they lash out verbally, where they attack your character, or even resort to manipulation or some other underhanded tactics to get their way. If the narcissist is covert, they might channel their rage at you in very passive aggressive ways. For instance, unbeknownst to you, they could stew over an offense for a long, long time. You may not even be aware that you have offended them, let alone know that they are stewing over something that may have happened ages ago. And now they're plotting the perfect payback against you and you have no idea. But what is incredibly destabilizing in this whole thing is that is the realization that chaos and drama can come out of this person totally out of left field, totally out of the blue. So dealing with narcissistic rage is like walking on eggshells. You never know what might set that person off because these people are super sensitive to even perceived slights and they're acutely scanning all the time their environments for slights against them. So you never know when the shoe is going to drop, so you're constantly on guard. Another thing about narcissistic rage is that it is an over-the-top kind of reaction to the offense. It is incredibly disproportionate to the crime that was committed. And there's a reason for that. You aren't just dealing with the expression of a narcissist's anger, but you're also dealing with their attempt to control and dominate and intimidate you with that rage. As long as they can back you into a corner and instill fear in you, then it keeps you from getting too close to the parts of them that feel vulnerable to them. A narcissist is often in self-protection mode and their way of protecting themselves is always to strike against other people first preemptively. Now, if you are questioning whether you might be going through narcissistic abuse or dealing with a narcissist, I've actually put together a one page checklist of the common signs, which you can access in the description box below. 
And on top of the signs, I've also included a diagram of what the cycle of narcissistic abuse looks like and the wheel of violence in that same document. So these are really informative, valuable tools to help you discern if you or someone you know is being abused. So download those documents for more thorough information on what narcissistic abuse looks like. And in the meantime, let's talk about examples of narcissistic rage in the Bible. Let's look at Jezebel. She was the wife of King Ahab and she flew into a narcissistic rage when she found out that the prophet Elijah had killed all her prophets of Baal. Potiphar's wife is another example. After Joseph refused to sleep with her, she flew into a narcissistic rage because of her rejection and her wounded pride. King Herod is another example of someone. When John the Baptist confronted him about his unlawful marriage to Herodias, his brother's wife, Nebuchadnezzar was a powerful king of Babylon and he flew into a narcissistic rage when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down and worship his golden statue. So these are just some examples of narcissistic rage in the Bible to give you an idea, and there are likely way more examples. In these examples, the narcissistic rage erupted when the narcissists in the Bible were confronted, rejected or challenged in some way. And that's a common pattern among narcissistic individuals. It's when their sense of superiority or control is threatened. And that's when they react with this intense anger, manipulation or vindictiveness. This pattern of behavior really highlights the fragility of their egos and their inability to handle criticism or rejection with any grace. One of the most famous stories in the Bible is the story of Saul and David. And so you can read about it in 1 Samuel 15 to 31. This story would probably be more relatable to people since it is drawn out so you can observe certain dynamics and how things develop and escalate. I won't read the story, but I will paraphrase parts of it. Saul was a king in the Old Testament. And the Bible says that when David first came to Saul, Saul loved him greatly. David was quite a remarkable young man because he had killed Goliath. And you probably know the story of David and Goliath in the Bible. And if not, I would encourage you to read it. So by this point, David was already a big hero because he took out that massive giant that was threatening to destroy Israel. Also by that point, King Saul was being tormented by an evil spirit. So David played the harp for him. And whenever David did this, the scriptures say that Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. So there was a lot of love and favor between Saul and David at the beginning. And this might have felt like a dream come true for David because he was the youngest in his family and hardly acknowledged by his own father, Jesse. So it must have felt like heaven not to just have any father figure, but imagine the king. The Bible says that David went out wherever Saul sent him and he behaved wisely. Saul set him over the men of war and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. The Bible goes on to say that the women had come out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. So the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Then Saul was very angry and the saying displeased him. He said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands and to me they have ascribed only thousands. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day forward. So imagine that. Things were going very, very well between Saul and David until Saul heard that song. It was two lines. And those two lines triggered Saul and changed their relationship completely from that point onward. Up until that point, David was highly favored and loved by Saul. But now after that song, he was perceived as a threat and an enemy. And it seems like David may not have even clued in in that moment that this shift happened in Saul's mind. This kind of shift in thinking is also a typical narcissistic trait because narcissists tend to think in black and white or that people are either all good or all bad. And I did create a video about this topic, so check it out if you wanna know more about the narcissist black and white thinking. So in this story, Saul actually started splitting in that moment when he heard that song. He went from loving David to seeing him as an enemy, 
and things just spiral downhill from there. And what is interesting is that Saul's initial emotions were jealousy, but that jealousy actually intensified and transformed itself into paranoia. So Saul went from being jealous to throwing spears at David to wanting to kill him, despite the fact that David loved Saul and did everything he could to honor the man, to be loyal to him. And despite David's loyalty and best efforts, Saul's paranoia against him was so shameful that even his own son Jonathan turned against him and called his father out on the shameful way he was acting. But that only caused narcissistic rage to come against him also. And so one of the crazy things to know about a narcissist rage is this, anything can trigger it. You can be doing your very best, being your very best, wanting to do well, wanting to please someone, wanting to work super, super hard in the relationship. And something totally out of your control can just trigger it. Just you being you can trigger it. Just you standing there and breathing can trigger it because it's not about you. King David is a classic example of someone who did his utmost to be loyal. Saul was the father he never had. Of course, David longed to please him. He thought it was an incredible honor to even be married into his family. So you can be the most loyal, devoted person doing everything your very best and still this person lashes out against you with rage. Your righteousness, your humility, your devotion, all of that can trigger their rage because in a way it exposes to the narcissist what they aren't and that also triggers their shame. So there's a no win in that situation. You can't win either way. Instead of a narcissist looking inward and seeing that the shame is coming from inside of them, they blame the person that is triggering their shame as the one causing it. So narcissistic rage is completely irrational. It won't always make sense and it could come out of nowhere. That is why it is stressful and why you're often walking around on eggshells with people like this. Now, the biblical examples I shared are a bit extreme because you're not dealing with kings of nations here. You're probably dealing with a spouse or a parent or family member or a boss or coworker, maybe an adult child. So how do you deal with narcissistic rage in those kinds of relationships? And when does narcissistic rage cross the line to becoming dangerous? What is God's remedy and how would God want you to respond? So that is a whole other topic worth exploring. And I'm going to talk about the subject on the next video. So stay tuned for it. It's going to be coming soon and I will be answering all the questions and also the things that you can do. And if the time has passed, then you should see the link to that video. So go ahead and click on that video so you can get answers on how to deal with the relationships you are in. And if you are questioning whether you might be going through narcissistic abuse or dealing with a narcissist, don't forget to check out my one page checklist, which is in the description box below. And it also has the cycle of narcissistic abuse and the wheel of violence with it. So really good information to have. If you'd like to receive more content from me, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.